It's windy outside. I thought that was a, someone doing like a burnout. <laughs> it's like, like, <laughs> like a 3100 Monte Carlo. Anyway, <laughs> fans, here we go. Another making the Wildcat great again moment. Our friends at MLS Power Sports have sent us this badass kit here that you'll have probably seen by now if you're a fan of the Wildcat forums. If not, come take a look at this stuff, Mike. What do we got here? We got some 12 millimeter wheel studs. These are some serious bad boys here. These things will not break like the Stalkers can. I actually broke it. I'll show you that right now. Fuck it. Show them it. Fiance. Explain that to the fiance. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that happened on my green cat. That's the before the blog little clip right there. So anyway, it comes with the uh, spline adapter for the spline nuts. It comes with a full set of 12 millimeter studs. And we're going to show you a couple different methods on how to uh, swap those out. So stay tuned. I mean... Oh wait, you, you going to say something by the way? I, I don't have to, I guess. I, I, I'd like to say that I'm really excited about this, but if you've been following the blog, you might know that Nick has had three Articat Wildcats, so this will be the third time that I've helped him install 12 millimeter studs. So. And by help, he means he pretty much did all the work. And then every time we install the studs, he sells it about two weeks later. Uh, so. so with any luck, by the time this video <laughs> airs, Craigslist, Saginaw Bay City, <laughs> and uh, in Michigan, Probably like nine grand. Get you in real cheap. All right, stay tuned. There is so much untapped greatness in Articat. Together, MLS Power Sports and SideBySideBlog.com will make the Wildcat great again. All right, guys. So step one with this. Oh, shh. bush light. All right. Step two. 17 millimeter with Doug's impact. You always gotta check each time which way. Is this in? Is this out? Okay, yeah. There you go. So take off your wheel. You'll see these little baby studs here in a minute. As Rick once famously commented, it looks like uh, the studs on his Yardman lawnmower were bigger. So. <laughs> We'll get this uh, live here. Son of a bitch! Oh, my socket! <laughs> Fuck your socket! That one sounded good. It's a good stuff. Okay, so check these bad boys out, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> every time, little things. every time I get a laugh out of these, because they're just so small. So, there's a couple different methods here that you can use to extract these bad boys. On the, I believe the 2013 and 2014 had these little windows cut out on the rotor. So you can actually just air hammer these things out or pound them out or whatever you want to do. Use the provided drill bit to drill this out to a 15, 30 seconds. I think that's what the drill bit is. And then uh, pull the stud through using a couple different various methods. So, we'll try that off the bat. Um, I've heard of some people heating up the stud and just hitting it with a hammer and it comes right out. So I don't really understand the chemistry behind that, but I think we'll give it a go anyway. So, Okay guys, so we've been heating this bad boy up with this propane torch for a little bit. Again, I read this on the internet. You know, sometimes things you read on the internet aren't true. Uh, this time we're going to try it out. So, uh, Doug, whenever you're ready, go ahead and hit this bad boy and uh, give her a go. Actually, kind of works, so I'm not going to go in there and grab that, but there's the stud. She got him. And uh, I guess we can do this to the other ones as well. Maybe we don't even need heat. Let's try it without heat. All right. Give her a bam. R.I.P. your wheel bearings. I mean, 
mean, to me, that seemed like the same amount of force required as the heated one. Yeah, I mean, heating doesn't make a heating the stud doesn't make a lot of sense. They Usually, span. things get bigger when they're heated. So, right, we can just knock them out cold. Yeah, go go for it, man. Finish them off over here. So using this method helps you from uh, not having to take this giant axle nut off, which is red loctite from the factory, and it does have a pretty extreme torque uh, requirement, uh, which I wouldn't do, um, but Articat says torque that thing to 250 foot-pounds, which is insane to me, and I uh, still feel like that's too much. Alright, so uh, again, here's the provided 15 30 seconds drill bit. This is again Doug's beautiful sponsored DeWalt. Thank you Kevin at Home Depot for selling it to Doug for MSRP. Uh, we're going to use a little bit of WD-40 and a pig mat we're sponsored by. Hey guys, happy. Um, so here is the uh, thing we're going to drill out. We're going to put a little bit of W on that, a little bit of W all over the freaking place, maybe on the rotor, who cares. Alright, so we're going to use not a lot of speed, try to hit it pretty square. Um, I thought you wanted to do it crooked, honestly. For me, I think crooked would be better because it would hold the wheel at like multiple axes, but right. from here I think we'll just hit it with some, uh, some gusto and see what happens. So slow speed. It's all over the friggin' place. So, you really gotta hold the drill like a boss in a situation like this, and the position I was in, not quite boss enough, so. Here's. Nope. Nope. Maybe a little pre spin? A little pre spin before you go into it? We'll hit it, we'll hit it with some power. Whoa! Go down a little. There we go. So, uh, you probably want to go ahead and deburr this if you got a deburring tool. If your name's Doug Butterfield, to be with one there. Now there it is! Oh yeah! Look at that beautiful deburring that Doug's doing. Oh, deburred hole! So, there is a couple different methods for putting these studs in. We're going to show you the one method, um, which basically uses a pinch. So what you do is you align your new stud on the back side of the hub, kind of something like that. Now it should slide right through. You don't want to take that washer out of there? Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> the washer, <laughs> it's the washer. Anyway, um, it's kind of not really lining up perfect due to the position of the hub here. There we go. Mm -hmm. mm, there we are, all right, so washer here, nut here and basically what you're going to do is pull the stud through so this is not my preferred method of doing it i'd rather pound it from the back to get it to start or something i'm not really sure how this is going to work great but we'll give it a go anyway just because we're here so any advice doug i think any you advice? might want to put that second washer on second washer on okay yeah, interesting put that on i mean i'm not really that. a man to follow rules we're, okay so, so we got a 19 here uh we're just gonna jizz it so here we go that's actually working pretty well and there we go so boom it actually works really nicely so if you compare what we took out to what we put in you can see the obvious increase in giantness and uh, strength as well and pretty much all things great Start with giant wheel studs. So something else you're gonna likely have to do um, is drill these lock plates out just a little bit so these lock the wheel nut or the hub nut you know to the studs right instead of using like a cotter pin so they're gonna be real tight with a new stud so we're just gonna come in with a half inch drill and open them up a little bit. Patented Articat design right here Doug. Patented. So yeah just do that on all four and they should fit on a lot nicer. Piece of cake. All right, so you can see these uh, new studs are just sticking out super far. You can actually, you know, set your lug nuts on there without thinking you're cross-threading them. And uh, they give you these nice either black or chrome. I went with black because my whole, whole machine's black, so that makes sense. Then again, they give you this little spline adapter that you're going to have to carry around with you. Not a big deal if you ever put, you know, these type of uh, lug nuts on your truck or something like that. So 
Uh, again, you know, make sure you pre-thread things on before hitting them with a gun. And then use this little adapter. I think it's got a couple different sizes on there. And uh, tighten down with the 12 millimeter studs. I think I'm going to go with a 100 foot pound torque. Uh, the stock ones that are 10 millimeter call for 80 foot pound torque, which makes sense because they're so dang small. So again, tighten them all down, go to 100, and then we'll uh, move on to the back side. Here all right, go. guys. So on the back side, things are a bit different. We're gonna take a look here. We've already pounded out the studs, as you can see, but there isn't a little window on the back side of the rotor cut out. Now we get crazy with the Dremel if you want and blow through a bunch of your little wood bits trying to cut out a window. Or you could just take apart the whole thing. So if you've changed brake pads, you're familiar with this stuff. 10 millimeter, you got two nuts here, or two bolts here that are holding on. The caliper, nothing too special. Once that comes off, things get a bit more tricky. There's four red Loctite T30 bolts, again, T30, shocker, holding the uh, rotor to the hub assembly. Um, and they do require some heat to get out, unless you want to break every single T30 in your collection. Uh, if you don't have a T30 in your collection, you're definitely going to want to get your hands on one, maybe even an impact grade one. Friends over at Harbor Freight, use code SIDEBYSIDE blog, receive a 0% discount on that. And uh, sorry, Doug, about the crash there. Jeez. It was an accident. No respect. If we would have had the locking extension, it wouldn't have happened. Uh, but anyway, so I'll drop it again. Yeah, take this off, nothing special. Um, and here you can see the T30s on the back side if you get in real close. Those do require some heat to get out. So, not fun, but uh, we're going to do it. Anything for you guys, you know? So, uh, Doug, if you want to grab that big old axle nut. What size is that? Tell the fans at home. That's a 30 millimeter. I'm gonna try a little heat on the axle nut. We put the caliper back on. Nick will jump in, hold the brakes, try to help us out a little bit. We got a cheater bar on the breaker bar this time. Wow! Holy wow. schnikes! We have crack. We're good. Loosen or it break? No, I'm good loosen. Good. He's just real tight. Wanna keep holding it? Yeah, I keep holding it. Still pretty tight. I mean Doug, would you say it's 250 foot pounds tight? It felt maybe 250 plus. <laughs> I felt 250 before. Alright, we're good. So we're gonna not touch that now, because it's probably a little warm. I mean all your engineers out there understand That's breakaway torque. But uh, things become all sorts of different when you add red Loctite to the scenario, so. Static friction. Again, we're gonna pop this caliper off and then we can see the dreaded T30 uh, screws here that are holding this, this rotor on. So I've broken countless amounts of T30s working on this machine. It uh, has eaten up more T30s than anything else. So, so this is what I'm talking about right here. These four little bad boys will just ruin your life. So, save yourself time, heat them up, burn out the red Loctite. You can see remnants of that here. So, whenever you're ready, Doug, on the torch, let's do it. Ooh. Doug almost singed all his arm hairs off. They're still there. So this is what the plan is. We're gonna get them red friggin' hot and hit them with this pre-bent T30. We're gonna go a little more heat. More heat. Lack of patience. I'm okay with that. I don't need this thing to last for a cross country trip to blindness. Right. I mean, it's not mine, so there's no reason to, <laughs> to do it right. To do this with care. Some say Doug, he is a master. Off the garage, the side by side blog. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I couldn't take a lyrics there. I was at a loss. Sometimes you can see and or smell the Loctite. That might have been it. Oh, you want to give her a go? Yeah, do it. Set her down, dude. Okay. Look at that. No effort. So, dump that out. Yeah, don't grab that for a while. Everybody at home watching, just <laughs> go ahead and let that. Um, sit for a while. So if you don't have one of these nice oxyacetylene torches, you can use propane on this. It does take a little bit longer. 
uh, but you'll have the same effect. So those things will come right out, no problem. Just take some time. Ah, ah. Now we're rubber gloves, Nick. Now we're rubber gloves. We're getting closer to the previously heated spot, so. Okay, interesting. Go for a little heavier glove. Genius level. What happened to that finger? That <laughs> 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 glove got a little. <laughs> <laughs> what is up with that? It's so much shorter than the other one. I, it's it, it didn't used to be that way. I've worn this glove many times. <laughs> I'm not really sure. It's a custom glove. <laughs> Anyways, Doug's actually got a really short index finger. I'm not sure if you noticed. He's just trying to play it off here. Here we go, friends. So after this, go ahead and let this thing cool down for a little bit. You can take your old studs out if you want. Just uh, don't hold on to them for too long because they're actually pretty hot still. And uh, we're going to drill these bad boys out. I think we're going to do it on the machine. I kind of liked how we did that with the nut. The finger's creeping me out. <laughs> <laughs> Show me a real short finger. He's trying to act like he doesn't have a short finger. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> uh, Alright. Next one? Yep. Cool. So we got all the studs in, we're going to go ahead and reattach the brake disc to the hub. Um, it's held in by these little screws, so they're pretty important. They make it uh, possible for you to stop, so we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of red Loctite back on them, doesn't take a ton. Make sure you start them crooked. There we go. I heard that helps if you start it crooked. That's something that I read online. What's well, how locking threads work? Yeah, yeah, like you, it's a one-time thread, right? Cross threads better than no thread. That's what they say. And it's not mine, so who cares? Hopefully, you guys can hear that freaking wind outside just howling. <whistles> kind of sounds like a little Kenny Bell blower at idle. I'm not like a oh, Vortex cool. blower. Oh, I was going to hit him with the impactoid. Electronic impact! I'm only a little nervous because we're down to our last T30, but I mean, these are going Solid point. pretty well, so... Is this the real last T30? This is the last T30. Oh, that's not even a joke. It's the last of the T30s. <laughs> that's torque. <laughs> so this is like more continuation of making the wild, uh, Wildcat great again? Yeah, we're, this is the Wildcat is becoming great, thanks to our friends at MLS Power Sports. I'm not sure. I know his name's Mark. It must be Mark, probably Lee, maybe Lewis S, probably Smith. Might be like a Steve or MLS Mike Lewis <laughs> Steve. That's a lot of first names. Anyway, MLS, check them out. MLSPowerSports.com. They also own AwesomeOffRoad.com. You can buy all these sweet mods. This kit to do this uh, upgrade with your wheel studs, I think it's like 89 bucks. Comes with all the stuff that you need. Comes with a drill bit that you really can't find in the store for cheap. And uh, it doesn't come with a dug, unfortunately. That you gotta get from Harbor Freight. Um, code sidebysideblog.com. And uh, so that one's done. Done. So Loctited, again, they don't have to have crazy torque on these things because the Loctite actually holds them in, not so much the torque. So that one's done. This one's about to be done. 
and uh, the Wildcat's about to be that much greater. So I'm ecstatic. All right, guys. So as you can see, we got the studs uh, installed on the rear. You've seen a lot of that on the time lapse. You've seen it on the video. So we did just drill these out like the last time. We drilled them out to a half inch, which is only marginally larger than they were, so it's real easy to do. Um, but you'll notice sometimes when you torque this nut, and we've torqued it to 150, that no matter what you do, these things will not fit on. It doesn't matter how you clock it, right? So eh, it doesn't work, right? You turn it again. Eh, it's not going to line up. We already know that. So Doug here is going to tighten this bad boy up maybe like a 32nd of a turn to try to line it up into the 12-point uh, splines on this uh, whatever the hell this is, axle nut holder. So. Locking plate, maybe? Locking plate. It's patented. There's a patent on this, believe it or not. from from so. All right. You want to hold the brakes? Or I'm gonna I, I don't. All right. I'm pretty lazy. Okay, it moved. Yep, moved a little bit. So, Mike, if you want to come down here and take a look, you can see how close we are to, to lining up. So, it's close, maybe a little more. Further? And I think having said that, I will hold the brake. Okay, I don't want to snap an axle here. I don't, even, I don't know if we're going to snap an axle, <laughs> whatever the hell is holding this thing together. Go for it. We're going to strip the bevel gears. Alright, just stay there. Okay. Oh, we gotta go here for it. There she is. Okay, we're good. That one lined up. Ooh, no. This one's either gotta back off a little or go way further. Really? Yeah. I say go way further. Alright. We're at 150, right? Yep. Look at that, first Boom. shot. Okay, we're good. One shot, one opportunity. Alright guys, so that's it. We're going to finish up by putting these tires on. And uh, yeah, so we're good, we're safe now. we got giant studs in place of those tiny little babies. See these? You don't need this in your life, okay? This is crap. Upgrade. MLSPowerSports.com, AwesomeOffRoad.com. Check those out. It's a good deal, it's worth it. You won't be snapping these things. Buy them. Until next time.